Welcome, ladies and gents. Uh, so here's the deal. Uh, I told you before that um, we're going to be doing a lot of notes, but we're going to be doing a lot of notes pretty much outside of class. And this is how it's going to look. Um, so we're going to have a series of note videos. So whenever we do something in class, whenever we're kind of contemplating or working really hard on like a processing, or the, on the processing of an assignment in class, um, once that kind of idea has reached its conclusion, um, do expect um, a set of notes to be coming to be posted online. Um, these notes are going to vary in how much how much I actually write out for you. Um, like for example, um, so one class, at least one student pointed out that um, the questions on the left on the Coral Notes are really your responsibility, and they are. Um, but if you're not super familiar with Coral Notes, it's going to take time for you guys to get kind of in that mode. Um, so expect me to kind of pull back a little bit on these notes, but they're always going to be here. Um, the reason I'm doing it through a video um, is because we're going to take a lot of time in class to process an idea. Uh, because that's really the frustrating part. Like that's the part that you need to kind of engage in at a personal level. Um, if you think about that uh, pyramid I showed you, this is the thing that we actually personally experience. So we're going to spend most of our time in class um, to try to get to that 80% level. Um, but this is the opportunity where I can maybe uh, present things in a slightly different way, help you out with some very explicit notes, and show you some examples. Okay. Um, so I'm going to be using, um, of course, the notability and the notes, but I'm also going to be flipping back and forth uh, to uh, an app called Sketches. Um, Sketches is a free app. Um, it's just a writing app like anything else. Um, it just has a few more pen options and has um, just a different organization uh, called the app. Okay, so it just has a little bit of different organization, uh, but you'll see that it's like I said, it's just a writing app. So um, it's a nice one. I like it a lot. It's very kind of artsy. So if you're looking for something to sketch on, even on a personal level, this is pretty cool. So I'll be switching back and forth. Uh, so please just be aware of that. So uh, let's get going. Uh, I'll just tap in there. There it goes. Notability. Sorry about that. The iPad is acting a little weird. Um, so if you've never taken video or looking at like a video as an educational tool, I encourage you to think about that in the future because they're really cool. Um, the main thing being, um, if you find like I go too fast in class or someone who gives notes in class goes too fast, remember you're watching a video, so you can totally just kind of pause it um, and then wait, you know, copy all the stuff down you want to copy down or take a break or stop and think and then come back to it. So I totally encourage you that to do that here. Like it's not a marathon, guys. Um, take your time and make sure you're encoding really well. So um, in addition to taking notes, I want to talk about some of the concepts as well. So this might be a little bit longer video than normal. So just please be aware of that. Like you might be in for quite a commitment here. Uh, but these notes, like I said, for your benefit, and this is for your benefit. So hopefully you're doing this. And if you know someone who's not but needs the extra help, tell them to come on. Like, well, the video is right there. That's at least another resource for them. Um, so let's talk about dimensions. Let's try to clear up some of the stuff we talked about in class and make sure you're ready for the next time you come in. Um, so here, here's where I kind of want to start. Um, there's, there's this question posed on, in some of the classes, but not all, um, which is how do you build something out of nothing? Okay. Um, which I think is a weird question. Because if you're trying to go from 0D, and let's, let's change that. Or if you're trying to go from 0D and try to get to 1D, and you're thinking, well, how do I build something out of nothing? Um, I think you're thinking about this the wrong way. Um, a, a counter to that question would be, how do you know um, that 1D is something? And I would actually answer that question that it's not. Like 1D is no more of something in our world then it is zero D. Now, hold on, like don't get blown away. Let me just let me try to explain what I mean. Um, so if I'm looking at um, let me get to the page here. Um, so if I'm thinking about zero D, there's a huge difference between this idea of representation. Okay, and then the actual thing. And I know we, we talked about it kind of being like the theoretical thing, um, but I'm just gonna put down the actual thing here. Um, so, like, if I'm talking about, say, like a 0D object, I can represent 0D by simply putting a point. Like, that's a representation. Now, that's not actually what it is, but it's, it's how in our world we have to perceive it. Um, because in our world, which is three-dimensional, we can't perceive 0D. Um, it appears to us as nothing. Now, that's not the right way to think about it. Like, 0D is something, but 0D is something in its own world. So, like, if we could somehow travel to, like, a zero-dimensional world, then points would make a whole lot more sense to us because that's all that's there. It's hard to think of it in our world because in terms of 0D in our world, there's nothing. 
It's literally, literally like physically nothing that a point takes up. Um, same is true for like 1D then. So if you're in that camp where you're saying, well, you can't get something out of nothing, I would say that a line, a 1D object, is no more of a thing in our world than 0D. Uh, in 1D, we can, rep I'm sorry, in, in, um, as far as representation goes, we can show it. Um, we can draw a line and say, well, that's what I mean by a line, the same way in 0D, that's what I mean by a point. But as far as our world, we can't perceive 1D. Um, there is no line, per se. Like, there's not this line that if I don't, don't watch out, I'll suddenly, like, um, clothesline myself or something. Um, it's simply not there. So um, this whole idea of something out of nothing, put that out of your mind. Um, one, 0D, 1D, equally non-existent in the, our three-dimensional world. Um, as far as 2D goes, we get a little bit better idea of what we can do in two dimensions in our world. We do have windows, thanks to, thanks to some technology. Um, we totally have like a window into the 2D world um, because we can totally, like, just like even right now on the screen, um, that's not actually popping out. Like that uh, pentagon, I'm sorry, parallelogram you just drew, it's not actually stacking on top of the screen and popping out. Um, so that would be a, a good kind of representation of a 2D. Um, in fact, I would even go as far to say as like this is actually a two-dimensional object. And I'm going to just sketch it in very quickly. Um, like that's a two-dimensional object just because it isn't popping out. Okay? Um, so like the screen, this computer screen you're currently looking at is actually a picture of the 2D world. And so, and so it's a three-dimensional object in terms of re representing three dimensions in the two-dimensional world. I can still do it. I can totally represent it. But in our 3D world, there is no way for me to draw in three dimensions on the screen. Okay, so I know that is kind of a weird concept, uh, but you have to kind of understand, like, being in part of a 3D world, the only things that we can actually do anything with are three-dimensional things. If you're in a two-dimensional world, it's just two-dimensional things. A one-dimensional world, just one-dimensional things. Um, so other than the 3D, everything else appears to be not real to us. Uh, but that doesn't mean we can't define it. In fact, that's really how we have to change our mindset on this this activity. It wasn't about building anything. Like I intentionally used the wrong word because I want you to encounter that conflict. Um, this idea of build is totally wrong. Like it's, we're not building anything. We're defining. And you can use a lot of different words instead of define that might make sense. Um, like reveal. Um, um, you can also use highlights. Okay, we can also use like the term point out. So in other words, if you kind of look at this alternative wording, it's not about making something out of nothing. Okay, it's about identifying what's already there and telling us how it's different and how it's special. Um, so when I ask you to build 1D out of 0D, I, you couldn't do that. You were rightfully frustrated. What I should have said is, um, can you please tell us in one dimension all the points that make it really important. Um, or if you go on to like 1D to 2D, like having lines to make planes, you're not actually building a plane um, out of one dimension. What you're saying is identify all the one dimensional things that make this plane important. Like which one are you talking about? Um, you might want to catch up with some of these terminologies. Um, some of these might be different than what your class was just because some classes end up with slightly different, um, going slightly different directions. Um, so you can totally pause the video here, get the rest of these. I'll make an additional note that there is such a thing as non-collinear. And of course, non-coplanar. Um, and so, well, if I put that in here. Okay, um, and those are just like the opposite of it. I'm not going to go into a definition, but if something is collinear, that means they're oriented in the same line. And so non-collinear, not in the same line. Something is non-coplanar. Um, I, I raised the previous definition of dimension. And it's not that I want you to erase yours. Um, I just tried to do that for confusion because each class ended up with something slightly different. Um, but in the end, when you talk about dimension, it's really just about space. And so when you ask, like, what does it mean to be a mention, uh, the, the real question is, how does an object take up space? Um, so it's how an object takes up space.
or if you want to be kind of tricky with the definition, it's how many different ways does an object take up space. So like what I mean is this. Um, so if I have a cube, which I'm representing now in this drawing, um, and I ask, well, how many dimensions does this cube have? Is, um, all I'm really saying is um, I can measure, it takes a space like left to right, like it's wide. It takes up space front to back, um, so it's deep, and then also takes a space top to bottom, um, so it's tall. And so if, if I'm asking, like, what's the dimension of this object, the answer is three, because it takes a space three different ways. That's really all dimension is about. Like, no matter how you word it, like, if you talk about perception, you talk about measurement, you talk about whatever, is this really how many ways can you take up space? And then if you accept space as measurable, and that's how many different ways you could measure it. Um, so if you think about an object that's, say, in one dimension, so I'll, I'll represent a one-dimensional object right here, um, I can only measure it one way, it's just wide, um, so I call that a first-dimensional object. Um, so if I have, like, a, just a box, I can measure it this way. I can also measure it this way, so it's two-dimensional. Um, so this is 3D because you can measure it three ways. Because it takes up space three ways. Um, this is 1D because it takes up space one way. And same thing for this. I'm not going to write this one out, but it's 2D for the same reason because it takes a space two different ways. So just, just we're on the same page. I mean, all the classes came up with great definitions for it, uh, but this is just an opportunity to consolidate the definition into um, something more consistent. Um, I also know we took some preliminary notes off of this. Um, I, I raised those as well, um, just because um, although you can simply add to what I have, now that we have a lot more information, like it's totally realistic that you want to go back and kind of revise your notes, that's part of the note-taking process. Um, so, like, if it's electronic, you might just want to add a new page. If you have, like, you physically just go jump up and grab another page of notes if you don't want to remake your table, okay? Um, so, now that we realize it's not about building, we can be a little more explicit on what we're really trying to define because um, this is actually the whole question. So, let's make a little chart for us. Uh, let's see. So, here, let's talk about the dimension. Here, let's identify the constructor, like what it is, like you know, point, line, plane, that kind of thing. Um, let's write the composition here. Composition uh, just means what's it made out of. And then, um, well, let's move this a little bit. A little more room to write, and then here let's uh, let's record the minimum number to identify, and I'll explain what that means when we get to it. Okay, so let's just jump into it. Uh, let's do some math, so to speak. Uh, so let's start with our friend. Whoa, get back here. Let's start with our friend zero d. So zero d does refer to a point. The composition of the point uh, is really nothing. I mean, at least we perceive it to be nothing. Like I would really um, like to say it's just location. But in our world, there's nothing to measure. So 0D really means no dimension, which translates to taking up no space. Okay, so 0D point location. Now, minimum number to ID, that's just NA. I mean, it doesn't really apply. Like, it, you need one to identify a point, but once you identify it, you actually have the point. Um, that's what we call it our kind of building block. Like, that's where we start because it's at least interesting, but you need to kind of build the rest. <clears throat> okay, uh, so let's... Let's keep going. So uh, let's drop down to the 1D, and that's our favorite line. Um, that, that is so weird as a jump to go from 0 to 1. So I understand if you had frustrations. Like, it's a really weird cognitive jump to make. Uh, but you guys did really well. But this is going to definitely be a line. Uh, now, the composition. Now, here's, in, here's what's kind of interesting. Uh, we do need an infinite number of collinear points. Now, if you don't remember collinear, please look up above. Uh, review your notes. Collinear do, does refer to uh, in the same line. Um, so here, here um, as a pictorial kind of example, if I want a line, I just have to pick like all the points that are lined up. 
And so again, this emphasizes that this isn't really about building. You're not building anything. You're simply picking out and you're highlighting and saying, hey, look, look at all these points. These are the important ones. Ignore all the rest. I'm picking these points right here and I'm calling this a line. They have the right qualities of a line, infinite number of points, all collinear, um, continues on to infinity in both directions. These are the ones to pay attention to. These are the lines I'm currently defining. Now, when I mean minimum number to ID, what I'm saying is even though you need an uh, infinite number of collinear points, all you really need to start out is two points. Because um, if you have two points identified, you can immediately see the orientation of the line. So two points are enough to kind of know where your line is, but you need infinite number of points to actually have the line. So please make sure you're making that distinction. Um, moving on, let's go to 2D. And okay, this is what we call our plane. Now, in terms of orientation, we're going to be using lines. Um, so we need infinite number of coplanar lines. So here's that kind of idea where I have a line, I have a line, I have a line. I just kind of keep filling in with lines. Um, the orientation here is coplanar, meaning they're all flat. If you recall the yarn that we kind of talked about and used as a demonstration in class, um, it wasn't until all our hands were at the same level um, that we actually had a plane. Otherwise, you just kind of had this weird conglomeration that actually turned to be a 3D surface. Now, this is weird. Like, how, what do I actually need to identify? Um, let's go back to sketches for a second and see if we can process this. No, I don't want to connect anything. It's reading my speakers, which is why it's trying to connect. Okay. Um, so if you think about it, and, th and you think of it in terms of minimums, um, it's not hard to see that you do need to start with a line. Okay, so we have a line. Um, if I want to uh, ask myself, like, what plane is this on? I still don't know. Um, because I, and I'm going to try to sketch this. It might be a poor sketch. I'm going to try. But it could totally be, like, on, on like, this plane. Or it could totally be on this plane. Or it could be, like, on this plane. Okay? So a single line is not going to do it because it actually can belong to a lot of different planes at the same time. So one line is actually not enough to identify a plane. Okay, so let's explore two lines because one line certainly wasn't enough. Um, so let's see for two lines. So we have one line here and you have, let's say, randomly just another line here. This might actually be enough. Okay, so let's kind of explore what I mean. Um, so we have to have like a plane that's on that line, but also on this line too, um, which means I'm already kind of establishing like a flat surface just between the two of them. Okay. I can't tilt it up, I can't tilt it down, I can't rotate it um, and get a different plane because the lines have to play together. Um, now, this tells us right away that two lines are actually enough to identify a plane, uh, but we can actually say it another way, and this is a super sneak, secret kind of ninja way to do it, um, but we really can reduce that down to realizing that two lines require three points. If I just identify three points, I force a line here, I force a line here, and I force a line here. Um, so three points are actually enough. Like two lines will do it, um, but also just three points will do it, because um, the three points will actually just make your two lines. Um, so if we flip back to our notes, uh, so if we flip back to notes, we can actually identify that now. Um, so it's going to either take uh, two lines or three points. It, it's actually the same thing. It's just how you want to look at it. Uh, last bit here. Let's talk about three-dimensional. And this is our solid space. This is actually a space we live in. Um, in terms of what you need, you do need an infinite number of co non coplanar uh, planes. In other words, they can't be planes on top of one another. They have to be running in different directions. Again, think about that yarn demonstration. It was that last bit when we each kind of moved our head in a different direction and we created a very craggy, terrain like surface. That's what it actually means to create 3D. You have all these intersecting planes. Now, in terms of what you need, again, just a couple intersecting planes will do it. Uh, but please understand there's a difference between saying, well, I have two planes versus I need all the planes to make it. So there is a big difference. I'm going to highlight it here, so hopefully you guys think about this, uh, between how many I need to actually know where something is, in other words, to identify it, versus what's actually in it, the composition. Um, so just knowing where it is is a minimum, and then you need a whole lot more to fill in. All right. 
Um, so guys, that's pretty much it here. Um, this, there's a lot more to this. Like this is the opening salvo of the idea, and we'll kind of continue this idea um, kind of after um, after iPad rollout is complete. Um, but these notes are for you. Um, there's probably still some questions, which is totally okay. Um, but that's but we've opened up a lot of different lines of communication now, so we can talk more freely about this electronically too. Um, and also, don't forget before after school um, and Spartan time when that finally starts would be good times to come in and make sure we have this idea as you're continuing with your homework. Okay. So okay. So the last thing I need you guys to do is actually just write the summary. So let's get to that. Um, I don't know how you we were asked to write summaries for Cornell notes in the past, but I'll tell you this is one of the most important parts of it. Um, it's part of that forced repetition where you can like look at things more than once. Um, so I have kind of a three-step process I want you to follow with an optional fourth step, although you'll want the fourth step when you see it. So here's how I want you to write the summary. Okay. Um, so the first thing I need you to do is to reread your notes, and then I need you to highlight or underline uh, three to five important words or phrases that help you understand or answer the EQ. And the EQ, of course, is the essential question. So the very first step of actually writing good notes is to um, reread everything. Just make sure that you go over your notes again, you understand what's going on. Uh, step two, you then need to craft your summary and you need to use those three to five words or phrases. Okay? Now sometimes you can't use them, use them verbatim, like you have to kind of um, like keep the flavor, so to speak, um, but that's what I'm going to need you to do as far as that goes. And then number three is the need to edit. So all written work needs to be edited, um, so you're going to read it through and you're going to have an opportunity to maybe change things, add things, subtract things um, to what makes sense. Um, a good standard, like the way I always kind of tell my students to do this, is pretend like you're texting your your um your summary to somebody for someone else to read. It should make sense. Like it should be short and concise, but it should also make sense and answer the essential question. Now the last step, and this is completely optional, okay, but it's an opportunity for bonus. If you post your um the summary as a reply in Edmono to the video, I'll give you bonus points on your on uh, your next test or quiz whichever it makes the most sense to give you bonus on. Um, so like um, if you do really well on that quiz, I'm not going to bonus that, but if, let's, I'll save it for like your next test. You do have to post it publicly as a reply to the video, um, but if you do that, like I said, bonus points. You don't have to, but you totally can. Um, so that's it, guys. That's the video. I'm sorry this one was kind of long and weirdly edited at times, but I got interrupted a couple times in there. Um, but that's what I got. Uh, I do apologize um, also. Um, that my handwriting sucks at times. Uh, I'm working on that, um, but that's what I got for you. So you guys have a good day.